So what we started doing in Phoenix, me and my team, my wife is my transa- does all, our, all of my transactions. Anna is my Spanish speaker. I don't speak Spanish. She's my Spanish speaker and uh, also ran my construction for a long time. We basically just started helping out newbie wholesalers, people who have never done a deal. So the way that we help, there's probably five ways we help, but one of the bigger ways I help is doing what we did for you. Not that you needed it, but we got to hang out and I enjoy your company. But I take newbie wholesalers on appointments with me. So they've watched YouTube videos, they've read books, they've gone to seminars, they've spent the money, they've spent the time, but they still don't know what it tastes like, feels like, smells like to walk into a seller's home and hear that dialogue between somebody that has a problem and a dialogue on the other with us mm-hmm. that has a solution to that problem. And watch how that interchange ha- change happens. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to watch a, new, a newbie wholesaler watch that and they leave the appointment and they go, oh my gosh, that was so much easier than I thought. Yeah. That's key. Then you realize that there's just these massive like brain blocks that these guys are having. And so we just do it for free. Come to our appointments, come learn what we're doing and just help people walk through their first deal or two. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see in the last 30 days, I helped four new wholesalers get their first deal and actually took them from helping them get the lead, helping them get the appointment and actually going to the appointment and closing it for them and then helping them go and dispo it all. That's fantastic. Yes. Have you seen them get the confidence and have success just from that first deal? Sometimes it's, it's getting uh, that out of the way. I tell people it's like the first, I was like really deathly afraid to kiss a girl the first time when I was in like sixth grade. And it was this, it might as well have been Mount Everest, right? Like this overwhelming thing in front of me Everybody talks about it. You see it in movies. You hear it on all the radio and everything else, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I can never do this. Mm -hmm. And I had this girlfriend that we'd been dating, sixth grade. We'd been together for a long time that she finally was like, are you going to kiss me or not? (laughs) Right? So it took her. It's almost like a seller saying, are you going to ask me to, like, buy the house or not? You've been in my living room for freaking four hours, and you haven't bought my house. So I look at it like that, that once I kissed my girlfriend, I was like, oh, my gosh. This is not as hard as, it, as I thought. I, the whole world isn't going to fall apart. And after you get your first wholesale deal, it is amazing the world changes. Everything in their brain changes of like, wow, this is not a scam. Wholesaling is real. I can support my family. I can support other people's families. And I can make really good money doing this by just simply duplicate, duplicating. So yes, watching somebody get their first deal and having their first check in their hand. Like, you know, there's guys that are like, don't get, a, don't get a cashier's check from your title company. Have them wire it to you, save the time. No, when you get your first deal, get a cashier's check. <laughs> I've heard so right. many people say that and it does make a difference. Frame that Absolutely. above your desk, frame it uh, wherever you wanna frame it, but it's your first check, it's so critically important. It's that first leap of now I'm in the game, now I know what it feels like and I, I, all this stuff I heard is now real and I'm not being scammed. This is real stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like your style when you walk into an appointment and how you handle the people that that are in the room. I think that's so key. And you don't ha- you can literally throw out the scripts and all these things and a checklist and all these bullet points that you have to cover when you go into an appointment because you are just you throw that out the window. You're like you go in and you connect with the mm-hmm. person with the people that are in there, one right. person or two. We didn't get to go to an actual seller appointment with you, but we went into your behavioral facility and it was just amazing how everybody was just so welcoming and how you you are so warm to everyone mm-hmm. and you ask how they were and you ask how one of the patients there if how they were how they were healing because they had a, a head injury yeah. and it was just amazing to see how personable you are and I think that is you just have to be you and if you you are not personable then that's where you have to work at right what do you think of of that being one of the major skill sets that's going to take you well I think we all you know and one of the my favorite people to be around is you because you give off a warm presence and it it's because you truly enjoy doing what you do right Mm -hmm. so we are so freaking lucky that we are in this business i'm lucky i didn't learn this business when i was 50. i'm learn i'm lucky i learned it at 36. i'm somewhat jealous of guys that are learning it at 22. (laughs) because it truly is (laughs) a fun business so what's fun about this business is that you can find whatever part of this business your personality best fits so for example jamil 
and Josiah and Hunter and his partners at Keegley, they all have three very distinct and different personalities. Jamil's the social glue, right? He's the fun, jovial guy. He's everybody's friend. He's the, almost like a big brother to everybody. Josiah is just, he's kind of a blend between um, Hunter and Jamil, but Hunter's like systems, systems, systems. He gets to exercise his superpower, right? It's like assembling the cast of the Avengers, right? And in, <laughs> in my superpower, my superpower is just being in front of people, talking, truly loving and connecting with them. Similar to both your guys' personal personalities as well, which is why we both need we all need integrators in our life because mm -hmm. we're like da, 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 <laughs> it's true. Right? Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> but I'm lucky that I found and realized my superpower, and I'm not apologetic for how much I talk, how much I love and talk to people and try and connect with them. I don't think of this as a job anymore. I think of this as I get to wake up and do what I naturally have. A, I, like God gave me a superpower and I get to exercise it every single day. Yeah. And it shows. Yes. Right? And it, well, I, yes. I just, I love that you say that because some of the best sales advice I was ever given when I first entered sales and even in real estate as it transferred is I, I always felt like I had to close like the guys and they were trying to train me to push and be authoritative. And I struggled the first two months and I finally said, please get out of my space. Don't yeah. talk to me for 30 days. And I said, let me find like myself and my groove and how I connect with people. Right. And I literally just saw something change. So I tell people always make a friend first, mm -hmm. like make a friend first, just start there. Take the pressure off yourself to be something you think you're supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And you're going to watch your business completely change. I, I, I love that. That's really good advice for a lot of people, not just in real estate, but people in sales in general mm -hmm. is that, Life sucks when you have a script. Life sucks when you feel like you have this regimen and all that kind of stuff. We yes. both like took a deep yes. sigh. Did oh, you hear God. me? It's like, no, I, I don't want to do that. So my thought on that mm -hmm. is don't be apologetic at all about your superpower. You have a superpower, mm -hmm. right? And we all, ours are similar, but they all are different in their own right. Just figure out how to go exercise that every single day, right? And then surround yourself with people that can help you do the other things that you are not good at. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this all the time. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to do stuff you're not good at. Right. Yes. Right. Hire that out or bring out a partner or whatever and, and build and basically assemble the cast of the Avengers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I, I appreciate you saying that because in our industry, we hear that we have to be this and we have to do these mm -hmm. things. And, and, and I like that you say, don't be apologetic because I can sidetrack an appointment, but that's what gets us the deal. 100%. And, that, and sometimes it's like, do you want Elizabeth to go to the appointment? It's like, well, I'm going to take longer, yes. and but you're going to get the contract because my mind is like, we're going to go, when I leave my office or when I leave my space that I'm at to go to an appointment, my thought is, I'm going to make a connection right. today. I'm not thinking about, I'm going to get a deal signed. I'm going to get numbers. I don't even think about those things. We're prepared, but I don't, that's not what drives yeah. me. My drive is like, well, who are we going to help today? What, even if it doesn't end up being buying the house, there's something we end up doing to help these people. Right. Something always happens where, yeah. right? And the best, my favorite, and I was just telling you guys about this appointment we had gone on, my husband and I, my favorite thing about the end of it was like, listen, we don't, like we want, like we like you guys. I like both of those options. Let's figure out which option is best. It's like, you, that's what you want to hear. Absolutely. I don't care what the solution is, but I know I'm going to find it with you guys. Yeah. And I think if you get that from a seller, that's a home run. 100%. Because they, yes. you've, I always say it this way. You have to earn the right to ask somebody to trust you with one of the biggest decisions they're probably going to yeah. make in their life. And if you haven't earned their trust, you don't have the right to ask for that. Right. Right. So when you get shut down, you have to ask yourself, okay, where did I, where did I push and where did I not connect? And that should take a lot of pressure off. Right. Yeah, and, the, be yeah, the biggest advice I ever got, the best advice, and I tell this to people, it doesn't, it, this isn't like a step-by-step -step piece of advice or anything, mm -hmm. but it gives you an overall understanding of what we're trying to do. And it's a very simple one-liner. And it is, it's not about the house. Mm -hmm. People think, I need to go in there with a construction estimate. I need to go in there and tell them why this. They're comps in the neighborhood, blah, 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 blah. So we have a weekly call, which, you know, maybe we'll say something else about that. We have a weekly call where my team in Phoenix tells what we did the last week, how we got the deals and all that kind of stuff. And then we have a Q&A at the end of that phone call. And this guy calls two weeks ago, he's on the call and he asks a question. He says, okay, so I've got this seller and I'm basically you know, beating them up about you know, how much the renovation is gonna cost and why I need to buy it at a lower price. And I go, dude, you've already lost the battle. Yep. If you're going in and talking to them about comps in the neighborhood and you're talking about construction costs and all that kind of stuff, 
you are not talking about their dog. You're not talking about their vacation they went on. They're not, you're not talking about what their plan is for the money when they, they sell, mm-hmm. which is what you, you guys just talked about with Jamil. It's like, what are you going to do with this money? That's the conversation you should be having. You shouldn't be sitting there beating up the seller about construction costs. You should have built the rapport, but you're not listening to the fact that it's not about the house. It's about the person and the solution that Absolutely we can provide, right. right? So the secret ingredient, we could, we could all agree, <laughs> the secret ingredient to the perfect appointment is rapport. 100%. Yeah. As cliche as it sounds, because you hear it a lot, it really is the truth. And so when you take people... I have a, a, an, um, took him on an appointment a couple weeks ago. His name's Jordan. And Jordan's like, I've paid for seminars, 30 grand, paid for this. I've gone to that. I've traveled around the country trying to learn this, and I just can't simply break through. I go, okay, cool. I've got three appointments, two that I want you to go on, one I don't want you to go on. It, it would, you know, it's an older lady. She probably would be spooked if there's multiple men that come to her house. Um, so I ended up taking my wife to that appointment. But I took him on two appointments. So I show up to the first appointment, he jumps in my car, we drive down the road to, to the house, and I'm getting out of the car and he goes, hey, do you need me to get you anything out of your car? I go, what do you mean? He's like, well, you don't have a business card, you don't have a clipboard, you don't have a blah, 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 blah. I go, yeah, I'm here to build a relationship with somebody. There's nothing, <laughs> yeah. there's no bigger barrier. Basically, the way I look at a clipboard or a folder or something, this is my personal style, is that's my barrier between my connection to your heart and my heart. I'm going to remove all of that. It's just belly to belly. And I'm going to build that relationship and walk in there and they're going to be like, wow, you're a normal dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm smiling because I was thinking about how I approach people and I kind of listen to these things. And I realized even when I was in home sales, I never brought the product in ever. I brought myself in and I still do that to this day. In Smart. fact, we don't bring a computer. We don't bring cards. Even when you're knocking on a door, if you're door knocking, I actually have my hands visible and free. Yeah, I don't absolutely. have anything in my hand. And it's a really small tweak that people don't think about. So mm-hmm. I really like that you brought that up because it does make a difference. And I think it also has an effect on yourself when you're walking in. You guys don't yeah. realize. I like that. That's a really good point. It, it, yeah. You have to it, it, think about the whole concept of dressing how you feel. And, you know, all of that has its place. It's no different with the seller. Like you right. have to you have to be in your own element and know yourself and what your style is, and again, stop trying to be something else to somebody. Mm-hmm. So I, that is a gold It's tip. taxing. Yeah, I mean, there's amazing. people that really are trying to wear a face, they're trying to wear a certain you know, clothing, they're yeah. carrying things with them, and they're trying to make it more stuffy and mm-hmm. more corporate than it really needs mm-hmm. to be. There, yeah. There's nothing better than just you know going to an appointment and saying, okay, great, well, tell me, what are you guys trying to accomplish? How can I help? Yeah, or Starting see if we're even a good fit. I right. use that line all the time. I it's say, hey, so let's good. we can go to the house. Let's just see if we're even a good fit yet. See if you know I can help you or you can help me. We'll right. just see what we can do. That is key, Casey, because a good fit, not just in in person, but also over the phone. Mm-hmm. You have to make that emphasis mm-hmm. over the phone. We'll see if we, we, we make a good fit. Right. See how we can work. Yeah, if that's possible. It's my favorite line because oh, yeah. because they're gonna come in. People always have a guard up because people are always gonna assume you're trying to get something from them. That's right. a natural human thing. Um, so that's why you know don't be scared of the nose. That's just them with their walls up. Take it. Let them sit. You know, say great. You know, I totally understand. Do the takeaways and say, hey, let's let's start again. Sometimes when when sellers get very I can tell they're getting tense. Like you have to be able to read your people too. And I can see it, they're, yes. they're getting uncomfortable. I say, you know what, I'm gonna go, why don't y'all talk for a minute? I'm just gonna run in my car really quick. Um, come back in and talk about anything but the sale. <laughs> anything right. about what caused that tension and you can kind of redirect and right. control. And so I think it's just resetting yourself and your mentality, 100%. you know, no matter what. Right, right. I like that, you I like you that hit tip. that reset when you walk out for a minute, take a breath. Yeah kind of gather yourself again, go back in and okay, this is how we're going to make it happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's good. And, and I like that we're talking about this because guys, you know, Propelio has had a ton of people on and we all have different styles, <laughs> one liners, resources that you can listen to over and over and over again. And trust me, a lot of, you know, material has helped me think of lines that get people to uncover objections. <laughs> this, this approach has been absolutely hands down the most successful approach I've ever had. And I don't think it's talked about enough.